Right, we have a Kerbal. And we have a satellite with a claw. You can see what is going to happen here. Come on, let's get this Kerbal attached. No, let's try again. Uh, he doesn't seem to want to stick. Oh, he's getting away. Catch him. Hello, I'm Orbator and welcome to the setup of the geostationary satellites. Someone commented in one of my videos on mining, owning the man that we need a satellite in orbit. So here we are launching satellite communication satellites. Let's initiate the roll program. No, that was not intended. In fact, I think that was Mechjeb having problems. Well, you've got a load of satellites at the front that's going to cause a load of drag. So inevitably, Mechjeb flips out, but it gets back in control. And that amazed me so much, I thought I'd re well, include this in this launch. Anyway, so what we're going to do, we've got four satellites here. We're going to send them up, get them into a geostationary orbit. So like four around the planet. Uh, and unless Mechjeb messes up and ejects all the satellites before we get them up into orbit. So I decide, let's revert flight and try again. This time, I want to do the scripting module, as you can see on the screen. I want to do a mission with this now, because apparently you should be able to set all the tasks using Mechjeb at certain intervals, and you should be able to perhaps land a spacecraft on the man. I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens. There are a few problems with, with it that, uh, yeah, and we almost do a role program, but we remind Mechjet this has to go up in space, not down back on the ground, so yes. Luckily, I don't know why, it just works. I think it perhaps it gets up high enough to the atmosphere that it doesn't flip out again. And this time, I limited Mechjet to stage one. The final stage is to release all the satellites. Perhaps. If you do have that problem, you can also disable the staging of the, well, the decouplers, which is handy, which I forgot to do about this one, but I didn't plan on Mechjeb ejecting the probes after it got into orbit. Anyway, let's go through the plan for this mission. I'm going to get this into orbit first, 100 km orbit, as I wait for 30 seconds, and then we're going to raise our apoplapsis to 1,000 km. And then we're going to execute a circularization node then to circularize the orbit after we get up to 1000 kilometers. And that is the altitude we need because there isn't enough delta V in the individual satellites to get it into high orbit. It's the way that you probably would reduce the amount of uh, fuel or the, the payload size that you can require to get into orbit. What would probably happen in real life, is that the main rocket that we're firing by here to get the spacecrafts or the satellites up into orbit will probably burn, get everything up to a certain height, a certain altitude, and then eject the spacecraft and let them go on their merry way while it deorbits itself. That's what we're doing by here. Except I forgot to deorbit the main spacecraft. Anyway, you're probably noting that these uh, spacecraft. Ah, oh, that's another thing. Mechjeb did not work. It did not want to execute the program after they were ejected. So after reloading everything, and you notice now our Kerbal appears, that we're executing the script. The problem is, when you've got a script running and your main spacecraft is the spacecraft that you brought everything up into orbit, but you don't want that, and the scripting program, you want it to work on another spacecraft, it doesn't seem to work, so... I was hoping to use this to recreate the Falcon Heavy X launch, but it looks like we're not going to be able to use Mechjeb to do that, to do individual modules. So I'd have to quickly switch over, quickly load the scripting up, and then execute it for the landings, which would be a bit of a pain. It's not what I wanted to do. I know I could use Kerbal Operating System, but I haven't got the time to learn the programming. Right, anyway, we've got the satellite up into, what was it, 2,863 kilometer orbit, we we'll circularize it now, as just finished. That is the geostationary height that you need for Kirby. Now what's geostationary for those who not, well, you don't know this term? Well, basically geostationary orbit is what you need for a spacecraft to be above the planet, say like Earth, say like you're watching satellite TV or something. You need that satellite to be just high enough so the orbit period is the same as the rotation of the planet. And that's what 2,863 kilometers up is for Kerbin. 
at that speed. If you click the nav ball to change it to surface speed, you should read a surface speed of almost zero. That way, in other words, you're just staying over the same spot around Kerbina. So let's demonstrate this in the map view. And you probably could see I haven't spaced the space probes around properly. I was using timing of the orbit of 1000 kilometers and it doesn't seem to have worked out because I realized after you've changed the orbit up to the geostationary orbit on the first initial one, then the time of your orbit is going to change. So then, yeah, I've messed it up basically. I should have worked this out a bit better. Okay, so now we're coming up to 2863. Circularize the orbit. Probably notice that the other spacecraft were in sync with the rotation of the planet Kerbin. Okay, so this is probably not the best setup. Because, but, however, the spacecraft will always receive each other signals because there's always one in a line of sight to that. And that means one will always be in communication with the Kerbal Space Center. And that, in turn, means that anything in space should be able to have a signal. Anyway, we haven't finished up setting the satellites, and you probably wondered why the claw was on there. And yes, we're going to have Kerpont Kerman connected to the front of the satellites. Because uh, we're trying to save on money, so we haven't got a big brain computer on this to transmit the signal. So we're going to use a Kerbal instead. She doesn't seem happy about it until we start transmitting. Oh, and she loves it. Think of it, all those radio shows and TV shows going through your head in one go. Well, that's not probably the purpose, not this, but however, it'll be like living in the Matrix. Or would it, I don't know. Is this a cruel thing to do to Kerbals? Let me know in the comments below. Right, who have we got? We've got Rodwell Kerman here. Let's attach him to the front. Okay, all you have to do is target the Kerbal. Point at target and then thrust towards it, or towards the Kerbal, and attach him. Alright, he seems to enjoy it. We've got him on his side though, which is a bit of a pain. I wanted them, the one wanted them all to face outwards towards Kerbin. I think this is a perfect setup for a Kerbal to keep an eye on the weather and make sure that all the weather patterns are, well, to tell you whether it's going to rain or it's going to be a dry day. Or whether you should launch your rocket or not. Okay, um, he seems to be really excited. I hope he's really excited. <laughs> I'm not trying to get loose. Okay, now let's get Kernard Kerman on there. He should be happy about this. I don't think I accept that the space car. Oh, sorry, it's a girl. No, I forgot that. There's two girl Kerbals and two male. Yes, I didn't attach your. Kerbals, if anybody has to be Kerbals in this. And don't worry, you'll be added. It's just I didn't have so much time, so I decided to set up these satellites. And now for the last one, oh, my favourite Kerbal. However, he has set the spacecraft out to control. Dudemon. Now, what kind of awesome name, or awesome person, thought up this name, Dudemon Kerman? I have to say, that this is the, probably the best name in Kerbal Space Programme. And yes, this is the one at the beginning of the video. Come on, attach you, you bugger. I tried multiple times, and for some reason, Dude Man is too cool to be attached to a spacecraft. But I'm not going to let that give up. Come on, attach. And yes, he has attached. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, let me know why. If you did, let me know why. <laughs> anyway, there's my geostationary satellites. I put RCS on these so I can slightly adjust the orbits to make sure they're perfect. I'm orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Flipping rockets.